Hello and welcome to Nick's Allotment Diary. You join me on the allotment today and today it feels autumnal. We're in to the second week in September when I film this and everything is starting just to go over now. There's still loads of beans on the bean plants but parts of it are starting to die back. Pumpkin patch and squash patch there's plenty of pumpkins still not started to colour up yet. These ones are the blue pumpkins this one and this one as you can see they're sort of still green but they've got a sort of bluish tinge to them. I don't know what sort of colour blue they'll end up being. There are some butternut squashes but they're not very big and um, just to show you an example to my hand there this one isn't that big yet. I've got a few that are a little bit bigger this butternut squash is a little bit bigger, but not much bigger. Um, about the size of my hand, maybe. And it's starting to change colour from a greeny colour to a creamy colour. So, certainly, they are starting to become what you would see a squash in a supermarket like. And there's another one, another example just through there. But they're not very big. Whether the variety that I'm growing doesn't grow that big, I'm not certain. I'll have to check the seed packets. Um, the other pumpkins, these are the normal orange pumpkins. They're starting to change colour. That one's starting to go from a darker green to a lighter green. There's another one next to it. So we'll see if that... Um, hopefully they should be a decent size and an orange colour by Halloween. I've also noticed on the squash leaves starting to get powdery mildew this white sort of uh, mottling on the leaves. It's one of the things that you do tend to get on squashes, cucumbers, particularly in damp weather this time of the year. I believe one way of treating it is to wash it with some diluted milk. It would take um, a long time for me to do that. So I don't think we will. We'll just let things develop naturally. The yellow courgettes are still producing. Had maybe, I'd say 30 or 40 yellow courgettes off this plant so far. Plenty, just off one plant. The calendula are more or less finished now. There are still some flowers, but as you can see, the heads are now turned brown and each of these seed, each of these heads produce loads of seed. These are all the seeds. So as I've said before, anybody who'd like me to send them some calendula seed, if you send me your address as a private message then I will send some out to you if you're in the UK. I don't think I can send them abroad because of customs restrictions. Just want to also show you the nasturtiums. They are 
producing loads of flowers now. You can see there, plenty of flowers. And a nice splash of late summer colour. In the greenhouse, everything is doing well. Tomatoes, I've had loads of tomatoes now. Lots of these little cherry plum tomatoes, tiny ones, some a little bit bigger than others. Um, normal cherry tomatoes, samples there. These yellowy orange tomatoes, they start off a sort of yellowy colour and develop into a nice orange. I've had a lot of those. Plenty as you can see still coming, still to ripen. I need to cut the tops off these now and stop any more. I have cut them back a few times but they keep producing more shoots. And these very nice and sweet purple tomatoes. A sort of purple with a slight bit of green underneath. They are the indigo blue tomatoes. Quite a nice variety, I've never grown it before. And they've got a very tomatoey taste, even though they do look an un, un unusual colour. I'll show you one that's very ripe. They do sort of change to a normal, from a sort of purpley colour to a, a red colour, when they are very ripe. And they do have a very sweet flavour. Moving over to the peppers, they've done pretty well in the greenhouse. Uh, the chilies starting to come now, those are all chilies, the smaller ones. And then these larger ones are sweet peppers. And as you can see, they are producing well. Bell peppers have done relatively well. They've started off as a green colour and are developing into yellow peppers. Have had a few holes in them. I don't know what's been eating into the peppers. Um, we've also got these ones, the sweet bonita peppers. They're lovely now. Uh, they're developing. They develop into a, a yellowy colour and then have a little bit of a rosy tint on them as they develop a bit more. The peppers that have done best though have been these red pointed peppers that I've grown from seed from the supermarket. These are just standard pointed peppers that I bought from the supermarket late last year. Took the seeds out, germinated them and they produced loads of peppers. Another plant that's produced some fruit at last have been the aubergines uh, or eggplant as some of you call it. Um, they're not very big I mean that's the size of I don't know maybe a smallish tomato really. This one's about the size of an egg um, I don't know whether they grow much bigger than that really. A nice stripy pattern on them. Uh, under the netting here we have the kale that I've planted, the two types, the black Russian kale which is this one I think, also called dinosaur kale. And this one, the red kale has a red tinge to the veins on the leaves. Both of them have done relatively well. I'm going to harvest some of it today. One of the things I always have problems with kale are that on the backs of the leaves you tend to get white fly. We have the beetroot and I need to give a shout out here to Adam 
from Allotment Grow How who's got a monster beetroot challenge. Um, you need to grow the biggest, ugliest beetroot before Halloween, 31st of October, and post your video. Go to Adam's channel and you'll be able to see his challenge. Here's my biggest beetroot, Adam, as it stands at the moment. Not that big. Um, there are a few others but they're all pretty small so I'm going to harvest them soon but I will leave one or two in for your challenge I've removed the heads of the sunflowers now um, so that I can use them for the birds the birds can eat them there are a few small sunflower heads that have developed a sort of side shoots. Another example of one here, which I'm just gonna leave on the plant, let them carry on flowering, give some extra pollen for the bees. Another one just about to come out there. So if you do allow your sunflowers to carry on growing and produce some side shoots, you might get the, ox the odd extra flower. If you just briefly look around the allotment, um, some of my allotment neighbours have got some lovely sunflowers. The one over there. And I don't know whether you can see that one. It's a long way away, so my phone won't zoom that far. But, uh, plenty of sunflowers. Sweet corn, as I mentioned to you in the last video, they've been nibbled, eaten by something or other. My suspicion actually is it's probably rodents, rats or mice or something, climbing up onto the corn cobs. These ones were planted later so they are yet to be harvested. I might try and put some sort of netting or something around it just to see if it is birds. That one is more or less ready I think. It looks quite firm but the tassels haven't gone dark brown yet so I'm thinking sweet corn although it's uh, nice whenever I've grown it here I've had some sort of problem with things eating it so I might have to have a rethink on how I grow it next year if I do grow it at all I do love the taste of fresh sweet corn though so it'd be a shame not to grow it but I need to think of a way of protecting it so that we get to eat more of it than the pests. Leeks are doing pretty good. Pretty pleased with the leeks. I have bought um, from a garden centre the other week a pack of leek plants, smaller ones, and I'm going to put another couple of rows in I think of the leeks to overwinter. They'll probably not be ready till spring. I also plan, this was the bed with the potatoes in, today I'm going to be planting some brassicas, brassica plants that I've grown myself in this bed. I'm now going to dig up my row of Sarpo Mira potatoes. I've dug the first plant out and this was the amount of spuds I got from one plant decent amount. I managed to spike one with a fork. That always seems to happen. Uh, I'll now dig up the rest of the row and let you see what sort of a crop I get. I'll just show you briefly. You can see there's plenty of spuds 
it's quite a heavy cropping variety. I've never grown it before, so I don't know what they taste like. Some people say they taste a bit flowery and they're not very, they don't like them, but I'm willing to give them a try. At least they've survived the blight. Here is the crop of the Sarpomira potatoes. About six plants, I think it was. And I've had that many. Quite a decent amount. Some of them are slug damaged, so I needed to get them out of the soil before they got too, too damaged by the slugs. But I'm pretty pleased with the amount I've got. Over here are some of the potatoes I've just dug out of the area this side of the bed which had already dug the potatoes out and as I mentioned I'm going to put brassicas in here so it's worthwhile redigging over the uh, ground because you're going to end up with loads of potatoes coming up amongst what you want to grow. I have now dug over the bed that had the potatoes in this year ready for the brassicas I've levelled it all off and I've also trampled the soil down quite heavily with my boots. Uh, the reason behind that is that brassicas generally like to be planted in firm soil, not loose soil, because they tend to rock around if they're in loose soil. So I walked across the soil with my boots doing a little sort of shuffle and then I've raked the soil over ready to plant. So the next job is to plant uh, a tray of cabbages which are savoy cabbages and a tray of broccoli which is over there. into this bed. These are purple sprouting broccoli. Planted them about the seeds about maybe a month ago, two months at the most and reasonably sturdy looking plants so hopefully these should produce the broccoli spears in the spring. So there we go we now have a row of five purple sprouting broccoli plants which should provide plenty of broccoli in March, April time, when there's not a lot of other things being able to be cropped from the allotment. So that is the brassicas planted. From left to right there's a row of Brussels sprouts and they're a variety called Brilliant F1. Next row is Cabbage Golden Acre. third row is Savoy Cabbage and the final row are the Purple Sprouting Broccoli. All I need to do now is water them in and cover them with a net to keep the pigeons off. Thanks very much for joining me at Nick's Allotment. I'll see you again next time.